Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. For this week's episode, I wanted to find something familiar in the form of a saying to try to convey my thoughts about the economy as it stands today. I even thought about nursery rhymes like Ring Around the Rosy and Musical Chairs, but those did not exactly fit and did not stand up to historical or logical scrutiny the way I'd hoped. I settled on when everybody runs for the exit. This is a play off the legal doctrine limiting free speech. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater unless there is a fire. The more modern, market-oriented version of this is Take Your Money and Run. This is also the title of a paper by economist Lassa Pedersen, then of New York University and also affiliated with the right-wing National Bureau of Economic Research and the left-wing Center for Economic Policy Research. The so-called Dane with a Brain is now back in his homeland at Copenhagen Business School. It is this idea of everybody running for the exits in financial markets that caught my eye, because I see both a general nervous tension in markets centered on a great deal of unrealized uncertainty, things that people are uncertain about over an extended period of time without either resolution or new direction tops on this list is the Fed and its command policies on interest rates. The Fed has been walking a policy tightrope. Rates are not high enough to crash the economy yet and bring down price inflation in the economy. Also, they are low enough to keep financial investors subdued and to prevent a job market collapse. However, we are also experiencing the longest inverted curve of interest rate yields in modern history, a traditional sign of recession. They have also reduced their sale of government bonds and mortgage-backed securities, a reduction in their so-called quantitative tightening policy, and they have disgorged most of their overnight reserve repurchase agreements, flooding the market with about $2 trillion of credit over the last year. We have also seen financial regulators coddling and cajoling the commercial mortgage market to keep it from collapsing. While the Fed has achieved some sort of macro or economy-wide stability, we have also seen three large banks fail, thus draining the FDIC insurance fund, a bubble in AI tech stocks, an upside-down mortgage market and housing market distortion, and a stall or even maybe a reversal in its disinflation agenda. On the other hand, the news, as it's typically presented at least, appears to most people to be good news in the commercial real estate market and the labor market. The two overriding and unaddressed uncertainties out there as I see it are one, the Fed's interest rate policy. The Fed's talk has been both dovish and hawkish, and opinions on its directions have vacillated between extreme optimism, such as six to eight cuts forthcoming, to extreme pessimism, where no cuts are forthcoming, and now we're back to some middle ground where a few cuts in interest rates are expected in the near future. Two, the national election for president between Trump and Biden, which if you believe the opinion polls, the electoral college vote is even or a toss up or just too close to call. Adding to the uncertainty here is that neither party had a normal primary season, so we have no reliable revealed data about the views of voters. Also, both major party candidates will be lame ducks unable to run in the subsequent election, not to mention that they are both old enough to be statistically dead even before the election takes place. So that creates even more uncertainty. Another wild card is that the Fed has been revealed as having a distinctly pro-Biden and anti-Trump bias or agenda. Now, what do we make of that? 
Does it mean they will rush in to try to save Biden with politically motivated interest rate cuts before Election Day? Or does it mean they will try to engineer a huge economic disaster for an incoming President Trump? The safest bet I can see is that they will sit tight and allow the next crisis to play itself out and then come to the rescue in order to be seen in the preferred light. They are the ones who cause economic crisis, but they want to be seen as economic saviors, the white knight riding in to save the day. I felt I had to lay out these factors to see if you agree with them and if that makes for a situation where uncertainty largely politically generated, can create an economic environment of instability. Whether that uncertainty and or instability is significant enough to cause everyone to run for the exits of financial markets all at once is another question. To address that question, Professor Pedersen's paper investigated the great financial crisis that ensued in the aftermath of the Fed's housing bubble. Here is the abstract of the paper. The dangers of shouting fire in a crowded theater are well understood, but the dangers of rushing to the exit in the financial markets are more complex. Yet the two events share several features and I analyze why people crowd into theaters and trades, why they run, what determines the risk, whether to return to the theater or trade when the dust settles, and how much to pay for assets or tickets in light of this risk. These theoretical considerations shed light on the recent global liquidity crisis and, in particular, the quant event of 2007. Professor Pedersen's paper mentions that markets face both the possibility of liquidity crisis as well as fundamental-based crises. However, the paper really only discusses the liquidity version of crises, where there is not enough credit forthcoming from markets to fully finance the structure of assets. Yes, markets and regulators could do a better job of things, and some people can make money trading the crisis, but he concludes that the Fed's willingness to provide collateralized loans to fill the liquidity gap save the day. Pedersen only addresses the issue of liquidity crises, not fundamental crises. Of course, also left unsaid, is that the Fed is who crowded the theater with patrons and tinderboxes full of flammable debts in the first place. Moreover, from an objective perspective, we are not concerned about liquidity crises in markets. An economy-wide liquidity crisis is extremely unlikely in a world of a gold monetary system, full reserve deposit banking, and no lender of last resort, such as the Fed, In this environment, liquidity crises would likely only be company-specific events rather than industry-wide or economy-wide events. The value of the company or possibly its ownership might change, but it would have little impact on overall production, employment, or income. Also, we should go back to the situation in the theater. Yes, yelling fire in a crowded theater is dangerous in terms of unnecessary injuries and deaths, but only if there is no fire. In the absence of the Fed, or even in its presence, we are more concerned with the theater actually burning down and killing all the patrons. In the market, this is the fundamental crisis problem, which can also be engineered by the Fed and can lead to all the theaters in town burning down all at once. Do we have a market situation primed for a situation when everyone heads for the exits? And what would ignite such a problem? Well, we can't know the answers to those questions for certain. However, we do know what would cause it on a fundamental level, and we will be ever vigilant about placing the proper blame.